for girls' education is probably the most important thing in the world today. It solves more problems than anything else. And I think that's extraordinary. Really, just as I was about to leave home, I was writing what I'm doing at the moment is rescuing my old boat maiden from 25 years ago, sailing around the world, first all female crew. And I've been writing the diary from 25 years ago, and I wrote the diary for tonight. And this time, 25 years ago, I was skipping maiden in the middle of the Southern Ocean, in the depths of it's a bloody horrible place, just, just take my word for it, never go there. Um, we were sailing through icebergs and, you know, minus 30 degrees below freezing and 50 foot waves and we were all cold, wet, miserable and had frostbite in our fingers. And something happened this day 25 years ago. Um, two men fell, over the, uh, fell overboard from a boat called Chrysons Naturally. Um, they both uh, had life jackets on. One of them uh, was rescued alive, and the other one hit his head as he went over and floated face down um, and died. He drowned, and he was pulled back on board. So this is what we were hearing about 25 years ago. My doctor, Claire Russell, who was just extraordinary, she was a doctor who we taught how to sail, because we didn't think we could teach a sailor how to be a doctor. So we kind of thought, yeah, this might be the best way around, really, for everyone concerned. Um, she spent two days on the radio, she saved the life of the guy on this other boat. She had put all together their medical uh, kit and everything else. And then two days after this happened, Howard, I got hold of Howard, my project manager in the office, and he said, oh, he said, oh, it's so good to speak to you. Thank God you got through on the radio and everything. He said, BBC wants to do an interview, um, you know, to talk about everything that's happened. I was like, okay, fine, you know. We already knew that Anthony Phillips was going to be buried at sea. So I went down, down below and uh, got onto the radio to do this interview with the BBC. And this journalist said, oh, so this must just be awful for you. I said, well, it's, it's, been, it's been really hard, absolutely terrible, and, you know, so sad. And he went, so sad. He said, I just thought you would be a bit more devastated. And I said, well, I, you know, I didn't really know them. He said, you don't know your own crew. I went, what? He had assumed, without asking any questions at all, that if two people had gone over the side of a boat in the Southern Ocean, it must be the girls. So he called up to do an interview about me losing two crew. He couldn't understand why I was a little less than, you know, distressed than he thought I was going to be. And that really says it all for me. And it really reminded me, because 25 years ago, I do forget how difficult everyone thought it was for a bunch of girls to say around the world. Um, <laughs> woo! Um, you know, people were having bets, you know, whether we'd get to the needles, oh my God. halfway to the first stopover, or all the way to Uruguay. <laughs> and we did, and we won two legs, and we came second overall, which is the best result for a British boat since 1977, and it hasn't been beaten yet. So, you know, we did rather well. And it really was um, when I linked up with, uh, with Charlie and Becca that, again, uh, something I was reminded of something very, very important, education, girls' education. Um, I was expelled from school when I was 15 years old, and hence why I ended up sailing. Sailing gave me a second opportunity. But all the kids that I went to in a horrible state school in Wales who also got expelled, they didn't get that second chance. All the girls that I went to school with, oh, got, well, most of them didn't get married, had children young. Um, we didn't really expect much from our lives. I was lucky enough to have a mother that expected everything from me, and I think that, that made the difference for me. But I look at my daughter now, and I appreciate so much the fact that I had an education. When I was expelled, I thought it was so bloody cool. You know? And I just start all my talks by saying, I was expelled when I was 15. Oh, how cool is that? Oh, oh, a dreadful thing to be proud of. An absolutely awful thing. As I look at my daughter, who is, now I'm not, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I wasn't meant for school. I really wasn't. But my daughter, who's not a huge academic, but works her backside off to be at school. I look at her and I think, how amazing. She appreciates education. She appreciates that opportunity. She understands what she's got. She's 14. How? You know, I, and I was saying to Charlie earlier on, I am buoyed by the next generation. I am enthusiastic about the 14 to unders um, on, on the girls and the boys front. Um, as I said, uh, 25 years later, 25th anniversary of Maiden, we're now rescuing Maiden, we're bringing her back to the UK. And I said to my daughter the other day, 
So what do you think, what, what should we do with her when we get her back? You know, um, I don't want anyone to put her in a museum because, you know, she's still got a lot of years in her yet. You know, she's old like me, but I've still got a few years in me yet, you know, a couple. <laughs> um, you know, so what, what do you think I should do? Maybe something with, you know, youth sailing or something. She said, Mummy, you've just, what, you've forgotten what you did. I was like, I'm not senile, <laughs> maybe old, <laughs> I haven't forgotten what I did. She said, yes, you have. You, you've just said, what shall I do? She said, maiden, ambassador for girls, next generation of girls, my generation, the generation that looks at what you did and, went and, and sort of says, but of course we did that because girls can do anything. She said, you did that. She said, you told me I could do anything and you did that. So again, reminded, um, I think through the, through the next generation, the benefits of all the things that Charlie and Becca and who have been talking about. The reason I was so blown away and, and wanted to support um, Charlie and Becca was, I think it's, um, well, we all know now the research and studies that show that girls' education is probably the most important thing in the world today. It solves more problems than anything else. And I think that's extraordinary. There's a study done by UN Women, which uh, you should read it. I mean, well, it's about five million pages long, but you look in the section where it says benefits to girl, from girls' education. It brings communities together. It um, stops teenage pregnancies. It prevents girls getting married young because they don't know what else to do with their lives. Um, it helps them get amazing jobs. It helps them be the young women that they can be. And that's why I buy so much into the Girls Network and also the Artemis Network, and very kindly are helping, um, as I say, Charlie and Becca. Anything that you can do to help, and I know that everyone's looking for money, which is a huge consideration, we all have to, that's, you know, absolutely. But there's also other things that you can do. Any support at all that you can give both of these networks is of benefit. Mentoring, help, contacts, introducing people. Uh, networking, any of those things that you can do at all are always greatly uh, appreciated. I have to say that with people like Charlie and Becca and Viv doing what they're doing, I'm heartened for my daughter's generation because I don't think she'll be alone growing up um, with a bunch of young girls uh, who really do think that maybe they can achieve a little bit more uh, than getting expelled from school at 15 and kind of hoping that everything would be okay. So please enjoy the rest of the evening. I'm sorry for what was on a little bit long. It's been lovely uh, to meet you all. And if you need to speak to me about anything that these guys are doing, um, I'd be happy to speak to you. Thank you so much. Thank you.